Robert the doll is very popular among the paranormal community. This doll is said to be haunted or this doll could be a cursed object. Let's look into it. Robert the doll looks like a little boy in a sailor suit. His appearance is only vaguely human. He has a small nose and he's covered with all of these small little marks. They a little bit look like scars and I think that adds to the whole creepy vibe. He has black eyes and his face almost has like a little bit of a smile to it. Robert holds in his hand a small toy dog and overall just looking at the whole doll, you're definitely getting creepy vibes but it looks like a very, very old doll. Now the background of the doll, he's 118 years old, which is crazy. He currently resides at the Force Eats Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Before Robert came to the museum in 1994, he was the property of Robert Eugene Otto, an eccentric artist and member of a prominent Key West family. Yes, the doll and the owner have the same name, but the boy... Usually he answered to Jean. Robert was a childhood birthday gift given to him by his grandfather. And his grandfather bought the doll from a trip that he went to Germany. However, this relationship that he had with this doll continued into adulthood. Convertito stated what people really remember is what they would probably term as an unhealthy relationship with the doll. He brought it everywhere. He talked about it in the first person as if it weren't a doll. He was Robert as in he is a live entity. Very interesting. Now the museum traced the origins of the doll to the Stife Company. This is the same toy company that first manufactured the teddy bear that went with Teddy Roosevelt, which I think is pretty cool. That's how old this toy maker is. At the Key West Museum, they found out that Robert was never likely to be sold as a toy, that a Stife historian told the museum that Robert was probably just part of a set fabricated for a window display of clowns or jesters. Robert is seen displayed in a little sailor suit with a hat and outfit. He looks actually really cute. It's weird how large he is as well. It's like not many dolls are that size but he has that little sailor suit on and that's probably something that Otto wore as a child that he then put on Robert. According to the legend, young Otto began to blame mishaps and stuff like that on Robert. While this could have been told like, oh, okay, Robert did it. We know you really did it. But strange things continued to happen that the parents noticed, especially as Otto and Robert grew older. As an adult, Otto lived in a stately home he called the artist house, where Robert could be seen positioned at the upstairs window. School children swore that he would appear and reappear, and they avoided the house. Myrtle Reuter purchased the artist's house after Otto's death in 1974 and also became Robert's new caretaker. Oh, imagine buying a house and that doll's in the, in the attic. <laughs> I don't know, guys. That would be pretty freaky. Visitors swore they heard footsteps in the attics and giggling. Some claimed Robert's expressions would change when anyone would badmouth Otto in his presence. Reuter said that Robert would move around to the house on his own, and after 20 years of antics, she donated him to the museum. She was like, okay, I'm done. I just want to know why she kept him that long. Like, 20 years? That's a long time to have a toy giggling in the attic. <laughs> That's what I don't know about this story because that would take me one giggle and that doll would be out. But to go back to young Otto and Robert, as Otto grew older, Robert became more malicious and mutilized toys started appearing and Otto would cry, Robert did it. So any mishaps, Otto's response was always, Robert did it, it wasn't me, it was Robert. Robert broke this toy, shredded it apart wasn't me, Robert did it. There's even a story of a plumber who visited the house and he heard footsteps and giggling and he thought, huh, that's odd, I thought no one was home. And he came upstairs to only find Robert sitting up in Otto's bedroom and he thought nothing of it. But then he came back and the toy that was sitting in Robert's lap had been thrown across the room. The plumber said it was almost as if Robert threw it. He also stated that Robert changed positions. So he was at one side of the window at one moment and then he'd come back in the room 
and Robert was on the other side of the window. So today, if you go and visit the museum where Robert is currently at, if you want to take his picture, you actually have to ask permission or else you will be cursed. I mean, you can take a picture, you'll be cursed, according to this legend, but yeah and he gets letters every single day like the museum gets letters saying sorry robert please lift the curse off me like a lot of people believe this so my perspective on all of this as a christian is with indifference and also caution i've actually recently read larson's book of spiritual warfare and i know demons act in crazy ways and can utilize stuff and objects that are here on this earth to do some really evil things. Demons like to be integrated in this world in various ways as a form of spiritual warfare, and you really have to be cautious of everything that is surrounding that sort of world of evil. And I think this is something that every Christian should be very cautious of, and that includes things having to do with crystals and good luck things. And like, I think all of that is integrated in this whole spiritual warfare thing. But as we know from the Bible, as Christians, demons cannot touch our souls. Those are protected. Those belong to God and they belong to Jesus because we gave it to them. But demons will throw as much evil and sin as possible at us. And as a Christian, you have to be very, very cautious of that. So if we look into the Bible, there is not any examples of demons actually attaching themselves to objects, only people which is also terrifying. This belief of a demon attaching themselves to an object is typically like a superstitious belief. In Acts 19.19, former magicians did burn their magic books, and this could mean that the books contained a demon, but it's more likely that these new believers were burning their magic books to prevent the spread of the lies and show that they are now believers in Jesus. Demons really work in strange ways, and I guess in theory, it could be a demon that's residing in this doll. It could also be a demon utilizing this doll to mess with Otto, play with him, talk to him, cause mishaps in his life. Demons appear to focus on deceiving people, and maybe this is a way to deceive young Otto, but typically they don't attach themselves to objects. They focus on deceiving people. The Bible consistently notes connection between demons and certain sinful items, but their attachment is to people whom they can control or influence for evil purposes. It's usually not a doll that they control for evil purposes. When I take a step back and look at this whole situation, it really, really makes me sad that Otto went through his life with this doll that was negatively impacting him. However, he had such a close relationship with. That's what is mind-blowing to me. Instead of worrying if this doll is possessed or demonic or whatever, I think Christians should mainly focus on staying away from sin and staying away from evil. Like that would be the solution to all of this. I would say, don't worry about it. Let's just put the doll in a closet or burn it, whatever makes you feel better. <laughs> and just try and live a good life and stay away from sin and avoid evil. But let me know what you guys think. I've actually went to visit Robert the doll once when I was very young. I think I just had like a digital camera I think I took his picture. Um, I probably deleted it because it freaked me out too, <laughs> too much. But I would love to go again at some point. I'd also like to just go to Key West again. But if this video gets a thousand likes, maybe we'll go down and visit Robert the doll. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think down below. And don't forget to give me a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Alrighty, guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye now.